Hi, Larry Berman here, and here's what's on my radar this week. It has to be the laughable results uh, coming out of Congress and, and various governments of the world trying to, to get things done. It's, it's really polarization of politics these days is, is mind-numbing that, that really good decisions um, aren't, aren't getting made in, in lots of places. It's, uh, it's, it's quite mind-numbing to see. Um, you know, we heard out of Germany as an example. Now that Merkel's gone, we're going to see legalization of, of marijuana. Not, not that that's necessarily a good thing, although we think the world is heading in that direction and therefore our recent comments to, to buy dips in the medical marijuana ETFs and, and some of the stocks there. We're likely going to see that legislation move forward too in the U.S., but it's, it, it could play out all through next year uh, as a political hot potato. So politics is, is forefront here for me. And um, when, when you look at what's driving the market, it, it's clear that uncertainty around central bank and, and it's who's going to be easier in terms of policy. <laughs> Right. The fact that they can't think about raising rates tells you how fragile the world is, that we need easy money. Yet the markets love easy money and keep grinding higher. Well, here's an interesting chart. This is the RSP equal weight S&P ETF relative to the SPY the market cap weighted ETF. And if you remember, first part of the year, we were quite bullish and said for the year, we think the average stock is going to beat the market cap weighted stock. And that was true until June. And the last number of months, we've seen the big cap names and big cap tech in particular start to, to lead up again to the point where that ratio is now back at where it started the year. So, you know, where's the value in the market? Markets are not cheap by any stretch. There's value internationally, except Germany shutting down again and, and parts of Europe, COVID is, is coming back again. So rinse and repeat, we're seeing a lot of the same themes. I think you play it that way. You buy some of the names that are selling off because of that, knowing that this is somewhat temporary and it'll flip. So you want to buy into, into the dips in, in those kind of um, market reactions, knowing that, um, you know, that it, it's a temporary kind of uh, impact there. Um, and that's really all we're, we're thinking about here as we get into the holiday season, a little bit on tax loss selling, uh, probably some more pressure in some Chinese internet names. We still think the value is very compelling on, on a Baidu, uh, now in particular on Alibaba after their recent uh, smack in the head this week, we, we actually added around in the low 140s to, to Alibaba. Um, our average cost is still around the 165, 170 level. So we're, we're underwater there, but the position's still pretty small and we're looking to add to it. Maximum conviction position for us in a broad portfolio is around 3%. Um, and we're currently sitting at about 1.67 or 1.7% in terms of Alibaba. So a lot more to buy there. We think the value is compelling. So bull and bear pick of the week for the ETF crowd out there. I think you start going long, equal weight, uh, S&P, RSP, not because it's absolutely cheap, because it's relatively cheap to large cap and you continue to be very concerned about large cap tech, even though in the long run, great place to be. We think an interest rate shock is coming. The Fed will start talking about being more aggressive in terms of, of tightening at the December meeting. That'll filter out over the next couple of months and we should see yields back up. I expect the 10 year to test 175, kind of the highs we saw this year. That should spook the equity markets as we get into the first quarter of next year. And I think you wanna be a bit aware of that and a bit cautious from that perspective. Have a great week, everyone.